Hi, I'm listening to Shale from Waffle TV, sponsored by West Beer. Today we're here with Neil Delamere. How are you? I'm very well. Uh, it's a bit early to see all this beer on one table, but that's fine. <laughs> So tell us about your show. It's called Smart Bomb. Yes, it is. And uh, it's essentially about the six people who think slightly less of me than they did last year. And that's kind of the the theme of it. I had various run-ins with various people uh, with different levels of malevolence and the kind of details of those, really, I suppose. It's uh, not about anything life-affirming in any way, shape, or form. (laughs) It's not uplifting, but it is uh, hopefully uh, hilariously funny, hopefully. So how did you first get into comedy? Is it always something that you knew you wanted to do? No, I had no idea. My uh, my friend and I w- were in college and we decided we'd write down a lot of things that we'd like to do before we were 30 and it was parachute jumping and running with the bulls in Pamplona and doing one stand-up gig and uh, killing a prostitute. No, I was, that was, <laughs> sorry, that was a different list entirely. And um, we, we did most of them, you know, and they never found her. So it's fine, like, th- that. we just did five minutes at a gig. He has since done five minutes, and we kind of got the comedy bug then, I suppose, at that point. And um, uh, we did a few minutes, did five minutes, then did ten minutes, and just slowly built it up from there. And then after a couple of years, somebody offered you 50 quid for a gig somewhere, and you went, oh, oh this could be a possibility. So slowly but surely, I suppose, there was no kind of flashbang moment, really, you know, except that initial one. Do you feel that the fringe has evolved a lot since you first started performing here? Yeah, well, it's just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, I suppose. And then it's the free fringe um, that has come along, uh, probably keeping some of the spirit of the original fringe 30, 40, 50 years ago sort of intact. So um, it's the same old, same old in many ways. It's too many performers doing too many shows to too few people. But sure, isn't that that's kind of the joy of it, you know? There's a certain, um, it's like the marathon or something. You do it. And I think we should have t-shirts saying, I, we, I've done the Edinburgh Fringe. Yeah. It's a sort of a, a kind of rite of passage, you know? And um, uh, it's like, you know, Highlander, there can only be one, there can only be a handful of people who who have great years. And I lo- I've, looking, I've been lucky enough to have great years. And um, uh, I just think it's where people should be if they want to do comedy in, in August. Uh, just checking out what everybody else is doing. And... Um, and putting yourself in a room that's too hot with too few people because if it's funny then, man, it's funny anywhere. You know? I heard a funny story okay. that, that, you <laughs> that you saw a woman at one of the fringe festivals you're performing at yeah. walking down the street with a ferret at three in the morning. Probably, yeah, yeah. Apart from that, have you had any other weird experiences with the Edinburgh Fringe? Y- yeah, it's Edinburgh. What's been the weirdest? I just think that no matter what you do, uh, it, it's Edinburgh at three o'clock in the morning. I saw really posh drama students walking home <laughs> last year, which was hilarious, and they're really ho- hockey drunk. And you know those, um, you know those things you like your, you lock your bikes to. They're like a. Uh, a big croquet hoop, essentially, with the airs. And uh, Jono decided that he was going to uh, high hurdle them at about four o'clock in the morning, three or four o'clock in the morning, not realizing from the distance that he was seeing it from that uh, y- you don't really have enough space between each one. So he cleared the first one. I mean, everybody stopped to watch him. He cleared the first one and uh, he kind of almost got, got over the second one. And then his trailing leg caught it. And well, an ambulance was called, let me tell you that. There were an ambulance was called and, um, and he was fine. He was fine. Good. I mean, his face wasn't in the same place he had originally walked out with it in, and his nose was somewhere around Leith. But um, it was a spectacular fall, and everybody pissed themselves laughing, just because he was called Jono I'm quite posh. <laughs> and, you know, he probably, yeah, probably deserved it. <laughs> That's inverse snobbery. But uh, you just see, whatever you see in the fringe, um, it's... It's just, ah, yes, the fringe, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think you could see anything here and be genuinely shocked by it. You know, J- Japanese drummers walking around the place, people covered in blood, people um, on the Royal Mile in, in kind of burlesque outfits, uh, people dressed as priests, people dressed as boys. I really hope that was a show, actually. I really hope that was, I really hope that was flyers for a show. Um, but it's just, because there's so many um, acts here and everybody's looking to make that initial kind of contact with a flyer or whatever. Like I took a flyer from a ninja yesterday. Someone dressed as a ninja. I was standing there, I was having a chat and a, a flyer just whoo, appeared like that and I turned around and somebody was fully dressed as a ninja. And I went, well, if they're going to go to that effort, I'll take the flyer. <laughs> so I just think that um, because there's so many things, th- th- people are trying so many different ways to just get your attention. Uh, and, and all of those ways are even more creative than the shows they, uh, they uh, are trying to sell you. So... Um, I kind of take flowers, I have to say, just because I've been that soldier, you know. (laughs) So what have you got planned for next year after the Fringe? 
uh, th- this year I'm going on holiday straight away straight away Ooh, where are you going? Uh, oh my tell you that and um, they'll track me down Interpol will track me down I'm going to uh, go on holidays then we start a new series of, uh, of a topical panel show for the BBC in Ireland um, called The Blame Game but I've been doing it for years and then I'll do some dates in Australia hopefully and say hello to all the lovely expats um, uh, because that's where all our human people live now that we've no economy anymore and then I'll come back and I'll tour uh, in January February March and then uh, look start looking at here again and so the grind continues but it's a grind that I wouldn't give up for uh, for any money thank you very much for coming and speaking to us your show Smart Bomb is on at the Pleasance Courtyard 9pm every night until the 25th thanks for watching